3,975. That number probably doesn't mean anything to you, but it should. That's the amount of extra characters that you get to describe your three most meaningful extracurricular activities on your primary application to medical school. That's about 650 extra words to describe the three most important things on your way to your own white coat. Your GPA and your MCAT will speak for themselves. Your extracurriculars, however, can run the gamut from, wow, that was a lot of fluff. I'm not quite sure he even did that. Or two, did you see what she wrote? She needs a seat at our medical school. She is so accomplished, so well-spoken. She needs to be here. Today, we're gonna look at my 3,975 characters. Every single vowel and space that I added to my most meaningful extracurricular activities. We'll analyze their strengths and their weaknesses all on the way to convincing UCLA to give me a seat at their school. These very words earned me a white coat engraved with my name on it with eventually two letters M and D tacked to the back of my name. All right, here's where we get tactical, but if you only really have one minute, just a quick plug for the conclusion. I think that's the most important takeaway from this video from an abstract perspective. But if you really wanna get into the details, stick around and we'll go into my application. Ben was my first patient. When we met, he weighed 244 pounds. 70 over the upper bound of healthy for his height. Over the next two hours, we develop an intimate trust. A trust that I'd accept his insecurities and respond with genuine interest in his success. That was the actual introduction to my first meaningful extracurricular activity. I served as the health coach and eventually the director of all health coaches for a digital health program born out of UCLA's internal medicine division. We helped patients sustainably lose and more importantly, keep off extra weight. Let's look at it together in full. That's a wrap for the first one. Let's take a look at the second one now. I spent four years as an undergraduate research assistant in the UCLA Department of Neurobiology studying stroke plasticity. Let's take a look together. Fortunately, many stroke patients demonstrate limited spontaneous recovery, suggesting an endogenous repair mechanism exists in the brain. Under blank MD-PhD, I aim to understand the underlying synaptic and network mechanisms of neuronal plasticity after stroke. That was the actual introduction to my second most meaningful extracurricular activity. Let's take a look together in full. Okay, that was the second one. Now let's go on to the third and final meaningful extracurricular activity. In 2006, five students founded VCH with the phrase Sequoia Lavang, or health is gold in mind. Since my first day at UCLA, I volunteered at quarterly health fairs and at bi-weekly health sites to mitigate health disparities faced by the underserved Vietnamese and Hispanic communities in Orange County. At our last health fair, the average annual income of our 150 plus patients was anywhere between $10,000 and $30,000. 37% of them had no insurance and 48% identified themselves as speaking little to no English at all. That was the introduction to my third most meaningful extracurricular activity. Let's look at it in full. That's a comprehensive breakdown of my three most meaningful extracurricular activities. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But are they authentic? Absolutely. I wrote about things that I truly cared about and I genuinely wanted to share every part of that experience with the reader. After months of reflecting, these were the three activities that really drove my decision to enter clinical medicine. The time I spent in the lab, the time I spent with Ben, the time I spent with the Vietnamese and Hispanic immigrant communities truly enriched my life. This was my unique journey to putting both of my arms into my own white coat. Being genuine worked in my favor in a variety of ways. Not only was this easier to write about, when I was asked about them in interviews, it was extremely easy to smile and speak about, to speak with confidence about all the great times that I had. You can imagine how easy it is for me to talk about Ben or those Vietnamese aunts that I worked with at the health fairs, as opposed to me forcing my way, talking about some hospital volunteer experience that I really struggled through. And I imagine there are some things in your life that you feel 
feel feel like me talking about Ben or the Vietnamese aunt. I want to double click on that concept because it's the most important takeaway for this video. If I were to do what many students are advised to do nowadays and write about the most sexy, most medically relevant experience, I would have wrote about my time as a hospital volunteer at Ronald Reagan UCLA, a huge academic hospital that's quote, the best in the West. And I really would have fumbled because all I did was sit in the front desk, answer some phones and get some patients water from time to time. It's not to say that that experience is bad, period. It's just that it wasn't something that I genuinely loved. Paradoxically, if you try to impress the admissions committee with things that you think they want to see, I guarantee you, you will bore them. On the other hand, if you focus not on impressing them, but really just sharing genuine activities that really brought you life and enriched your education, you will catch their attention. Don't focus on writing the perfect work and activities section. Don't focus on being the greatest storyteller. The goal is to shine by telling the most authentic story possible, your genuine story. This means doing the things that you really care about so that when it comes time to write about them, it's easy to do so. I'm going to emphasize this because this cannot be emphasized enough. If the goal is to write about things that you absolutely care about, you need to do things that you absolutely care about. This is one of the biggest problems that plagues the pre-med community. Look at your week right now. Look at last week. Were you spending a lot of time, hours on the things that you say you care about? Or was your schedule kind of a reality? active mess, a bunch of things that you feel like you should be doing, but aren't really quite sure and just haven't quit yet because you just really haven't found a way to spend that time better. Don't live your undergraduate years without a plan for your application, because when it comes time to apply and pay the piper, you will want to really have many hundreds of hours in activities you cared about and not be in the position where you have to fluff or even worse, make up things about activities that you really didn't enjoy. This process starts years in advance. What I showed you today in this video is the final final product. Remember to start with the activities that you love and the writing will come later. You can think of it really simply in this way. It's very difficult to write or interview about something that you aren't really passionate for. On the flip side, if you found something that you really care about, it's really hard not to be excited when you're writing or talking about it. And this becomes your it factor, the extracurricular activity, the theme that sets you apart from every other pre-med student. Next steps. Well, if you're struggling finding extracurricular activities that you're really passionate about, check out my extracurricular activities playlist where I break down different components of superstar and not so superstar extracurricular activities. If you're still learning about the basics of medical school admissions and you're not quite here yet, then I suggest you go take a look at the fundamentals playlist. If you'd like me to analyze where you're at in your pre-med journey, I suggest checking out application dissection. It's a tool that I use to systematically assess each and every one of your six levers to give you a comprehensive breakdown of the overall strength of your entire application. I'll even give you some next steps on some of the parts of your application that I feel are weaker than the others. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.